you about the hang off and green infrastructure opportunities mapping project that we've been doing um, as the OMB team. Um, so this is uh, a, a process that we're working through really to look at Slangothlan um, and identify op potential theoretical opportunities for green infrastructure um, around the town. So green infrastructure being um, a, a range of both um, sort of green plant um, uh, environmental type adaptations and more um, classical infrastructure elements that might be needed to help knit things together. Um, so this really is just an opportunities mapping process. So this isn't a, uh, by no means is this a prescriptive project. Um, this comes off the back of a larger piece of work that the AOMB have done called Landscape and Nature Recovery in a Changing Climate. And in that, it looks at the whole of the AOMB from a landscape scale perspective and identifies uh, the risks, the adaptations and the mitigations available within those landscapes, um, knowing that, that climate change is coming down the road and in some ways is already here. So this is, is taking a, a more focused look um, rather than looking across all of the developed landscapes in the AOMB. This is zooming in just on Slangothlan and looking at what could theoretically fit within the town um, if there was community um, enthusiasm for any of this. Um, and, and this is a, a proposal that's put together sort of covering all of the bits and pieces that could fit. Um, that could then be cherry picked from uh, depending on community interest and funding opportunities. So there's six key themes running through the proposal and that is green spaces, equitable access, biodiversity, nature connectedness, the historic environment and the landscape. And I think we would probably agree that all six of those aspects are incredibly important in a town such as Langothlan, you know, with such a fantastic setting and rich um, historic and, and cultural um, ties uh, and really making sure that we have accessible opportunities for all members of our community. So the concept is for connecting the existing green spaces around the town together improving the infrastructure that links them and adding existing assets to improve their quality um, and creating new green infrastructure assets and the the basic principles excuse me um, these are the basic principles that we're looking to work to um, these are all included in the the document that i'm putting together in draft form at the moment that i'll of course share with you yourselves once uh, once that's a little bit further progressed along um, but again, I don't think there's anything particularly uh, um, particularly contentious or outside of the the sorts of work that is already being done in and around Slingothlin included there. Um, so as I said before, there's two sort of suites of improvement that are identified within this. There's the ecological improvements, um, things like wildflower meadows, tree planting, um, increasing the street trees and street planting green the, the greenery within the urban environment and also uh, things like uh, natural flood management strategies such as stream meanders and pools so that's looking at ways to slow the speed of water running off the the built environment and and slow how quickly it runs into our streams and rivers to mitigate the peak of flood events further downstream um, and also to hold water in the places that we want it and need it around town so <coughs> Not only are we facing potential, potentially more and more unseasonal flooding events, but we're also likely to face more um, periods of dry weather and again, unseasonally dry weather. So, you know, it might be about actually holding water in our parks because that then helps us keep our, our plants and our green spaces looking lush and green. It might be keeping water up on the hillside where it's accessible to farmland um, cattle. And then there's facilities improvements. So this is things such as improving and maintaining the paths that um, already exist around town. 
Um, as I said before, the so SUDS is the sustainable drainage systems. Um, I was just hinting towards things like the permeable surfaces. So when you see the car parks that have all got the little spaces of gravel or, or mud and grass growing through them, areas that allow water to percolate through and stay within the soil layer rather than landing on tarmac and just running straight off. Um, and also supporting Llangollen in being bicycle friendly. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I will admit that I don't live in Llangollen, but I do work there and I love it as a town. But uh, the traffic in Llangollen is really something during the, especially during the summer. And more people using bicycles to come into town hopefully means fewer cars, less congestion and uh, better air quality. So what we've done is focused in on a route around Llangollen um, and you can see it highlighted here. The, the probably minutiae detail of it isn't particularly important, I don't think at this stage, but um, what we did was looked at Llangollen as a whole and, and found a numerous existing green spaces within Llangollen um, and identified a way of linking those places together really so that we could maximise the opportunities to show off green infrastructure opportunities to the community and then what we've done is had six illustrations made up um, and I'm just going to work through these six illustrations now at whatever pace you'd like and then once we get to the end of them I'll uh, stop screen sharing and we can um, have some questions and conversation about it. Um, so this is th these illustrations are all in draft form as is the main document um, and, and hence why I'm bringing it to you now to get your input um, but Hopefully you should be able to recognise where most of these illustrations are based. Um, so uh, the name of the streets just disappeared out of my head. Is it Vronbacher uh, up at the allotments? Um, and and here we're looking at you know whether whether the community would want to see wildflower um, verges, um, edible hedgerows going in in place of uh, the metal fences putting in some you know, just wooden shelters, just some simple shelter spaces. Um, COVID's really uh, brought to the forefront of our attention how restricted it can be when we can't meet in an enclosed space. And, and just having a little bit of shelter can give groups uh, and, and individuals within the community that space uh, to meet and whether that's formal meetings um, or just sort of, uh, uh, social meetings in passing. Um, I'll move on to this is the second illustration. So um, this has had a, a little bit of artistic license put into it, um, sort of twisting the view around a little bit. So we've got the Vivod up on the right hand side there and uh, that path is essentially looking back in the direction of the allotment. Um, so Dennis Brand would in fact be over your shoulder, but we've pulled it around a little bit um, just to try and give the illustration some some context and some sense of place um, and here it's things like maintaining the the historic boundary fence lines that you know are falling into disrepair and are at risk of loss but we feel they add something to the um, to the landscape in the AONB that sense of history and place um, again it's whether there's space for edible hedgerows or fruit trees in the community potentially as a, a stepping stone to build nature connectedness and help locals engage with nature and wildlife a little bit more and then bug houses and uh, uh, bat boxes and tree boxes and under canopy planting looking at um, putting some of the native species back into our woodlands possibly taking out some of the the non-native species such as laurel or reducing them to uh, support the native species bounce back a little bit more um, and then we come down into Riverside Park um, and the, the first thing that really struck me when I visited Riverside Park for the first time uh, just uh, just in, in a working capacity I suppose in, in, in my adult life um, was I stood in the park in midsummer and was struck by how the, the traffic rolling down the A5 was just a part of the backdrop of the park and and so the, along the back edge here, we're uh, we're suggesting things like putting a hedgerow in to act as a visual and sound barrier. 
give you know Riverside Park is an absolutely stunning location and and just by detracting away uh, distracting people away from the the presence of the A5 right next to it we think that could have some huge uh, beneficial impact on, on people's experience of the park um, and then these uh, these smaller trees in the foreground here, these are what's known as shade trees. So they're they're trees that aren't um, designed to grow particularly huge, but are uh, put in place to offer shade during the summer. And um, trees trees offer a cooling effect um, underneath them. So again, a little bit of respite from midsummer heat, um, but without having to put in built infrastructure. Um, and exploring whether there's an interest for more wildflower meadow in there. We know there's real interest in redeveloping the park, the, the play park, playground side of things. And I've had good conversations with Jess um, about that. Um, so we then move on up towards the canal. And this is really um, it's just showing off the the canal as it is already and wondering how many people make it into Thangothlam but never make it up onto the canal and it really is a fantastic and unique feature. Um, I spent many years living and working in Birmingham so I'm well used to being around canals but canals with heritage horse-drawn uh, narrowboats on that's something totally different um, and uh, this this on the left hand side here is uh, an idea that you can put seating into spaces that doesn't necessarily involve people looking um, on the horizontal plane at each, at each other and you can actually design seating in a more reclined position that encourages people to stop and, and look back and look up and engage with the tree canopy or engage with the night sky um, so again offering that as a potential opportunity and sites where that might fit in and then if we carried on along the canal and crossed over the bridge we would come up onto the sports field um, with the uh, the Eisteddfod Pavilion in the background here, and and again, you know, nothing major here, but the the potential of putting in um, an avenue of shade trees over that that path that gets used by the school kids every morning, and I would imagine gets used by a lot of locals for walking dogs or teaching kids to ride bikes, and and you know, beautiful setting, but um, midsummer when the heat's really kicking in. It would be a bit of a stark, hot, baked place, I would imagine. And uh, potentially, again, if there was some desire for it, then uh, an avenue of shade trees could offer a little bit of respite whilst detracting absolutely nothing from the sports facility up there. And then lastly, we come back down into town. And what really, the time I walked up this street, um, I'm not sure if this is Church Street or if it's moved into a different name. I can never keep track of which bits which up here. But these are the steps up through into the co-op. And this is the, the one way. And, and what really stood out to me was there's a couple of houses up there that have got window baskets and, and plant pots out the front. And just the difference that that made to the, um, the feel of that little stretch of street. And again, whether there's an appetite for more, more street planting or uh, green walls. Um, and these these big planters in the foreground here, these are actually bike locks. So they've uh, they're they're big planters, but they've got a reinforced steel bar over the top that allows people to park a bike and lock a bike up against it in a really secure way. It means it's not up against a lamppost at risk of twisting and falling over. It's not being parked and locked in places that get in the way of pedestrians and pushchairs or wheelchair users, and it doesn't look like a bike lock. So uh, it doesn't sit there as just some steel metal uh, piece, some lump in the in the street. So those are the sorts of uh, sorry, I've just lost the ability to stop sharing my screen. Um, those are the sorts of pieces that we have pulled together as potential opportunities um, within Thangothlan. I'm very happy to pull any of those images back up if desired or to field any questions. No, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. Any colleagues got any questions? Mr Palmer? Yes, I, 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 I welcome your imaginative approach. Um, I, I think that uh, one of the key things about the landscape here is it isn't recognised that the farmers and the landowners are key 
to the fantastic landscape that we have. And uh, I, I mentioned this about Mike Langotlin, that they, they, they weren't recognized as being an important part of the landscape of Langotlin. So I, I'd like that to be recognized. Uh, cycling, as you say, is uh, hairy. Uh, if you want to go into town on your bike, and I do it regularly, <clears throat> going along the A5 can be really scary. Whether we uh, and you can't have a bike lane on the A5. Now, whether we could share the pavements, I don't know. But it needs some really imaginative thinking, and and it's up to. I've tried, but better brains than mine need to be brought into in, into this one. Uh, I'm I'm glad you're uh, engaging with Jess because she's got lots and lots of ideas in the in the in the park. Uh, for the parks, not not just that, because you've not you've not touched on penguin. That's a lot of stuff is going on there, and you've not touched on the main car park, and that's a really ugly car park. <coughs> and Denbyshire could put shade trees on there. It would achieve a lot of the stuff that you want to do in in terms of drainage of 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 um, of tarmac, uh, and it would enhance the main car park, which is the entry point for a lot of our visitors. So I'd like you to consider that. Uh, and uh, I, th I think also um, leaf management could be an issue if you're going to put all these trees up. Oh. Hey, brilliant. Stuart, you had your hand up. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, just, uh, yeah, a uh, very laudable young man, um, if I may say so. Um, just a few caveats. Um, it's all very well coming in with wonderful ideas and they are wonderful ideas. However, uh, you need to really get into what the local people want. For, the, uh, for example, the first shot is the, at the bottom of the hill from where I live. The allotments, the, the, uh, some people approached me uh, about a month or so ago, concerned they'd heard stories the allotments were going to be sold. So I suspect it's something to do with this. I know, uh, I know, I know they're not. But what I'm saying to you is there's a waiting list for those allotments. And if you start putting sheds on there and taking up space, I think you'll get a lot of resistance. That's number one. Uh, Riverside Park. I was the one who got 500,000 quid back in 2004 and had it uh, redone. And I offered to work with Jess, but unfortunately, the council wouldn't let me. Uh, but what I will point out to you, there was a hedge there and it was taken out uh, because of the cost of maintenance. So you've got that one to beat up. And just be careful with the field by the school. It's nothing to do with the field at the school. It's nothing to do with the sports facility there. It is for the people of Clangothan. So when you're approaching people of Clangothan, bear that in mind. It is owned by on behalf of the people of Clangothan. So you've got to get the people of Clangothan, not the school, uh, not the county on board. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to ask any questions? Did you have your hand up, Robin? Thanks. Um, really great presentation and some really inspiring ideas and obviously a lot of work uh, and thinking and consultation still to come. Um, it was just a, a request really, um, uh, as you're looking at some of the, the work, um, just to, to really think through how we can be building the Welsh language in. Um, a, a project that I've been involved in has been, for example, capturing the, um, the traditional names of fields. Uh, as they've been doing other projects and and and, and getting them on record, um, so it'd be great to see that being built into the project throughout the the ideas that you've explored. Thank you. Anybody else? So absolutely, absolutely, um, or inspiring in terms of its uh, creativity and its uh, aims. Uh, a couple of things. I think reiterating something that. Councillor Palmer and Councillor Davis touched on is the importance of building into it as well as the doing the capital stuff. This is what we've done is, is ongoing maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, in, in terms of the maintenance of hedges and trees and stuff. I've seen in the past stuff done and then after a couple of years, it looks it it's kind of lost its impact because it just looks unkempt and uncared for yeah uh so important to be one of the one of the um one of the questions i had is uh, a couple of questions what form is community consultation going to take and and also a, a sort of time scale in terms of um 
when, when you'd see the consultation process and uh, if you got managed to get some funding for it, uh, kind of what would be the progression? Is it a plan over two years or three years or four years or? Yeah. Sorry, I was just scribbling notes as you were yeah. finishing off there. Um, OK, so I will uh, I'll touch on a few of those points, um, probably in reverse order. Um, this this document's really about the stage before looking at funding opportunities and actual mm -hmm. installation and development. Um, and then this links actually right back to the first point made um, about farmers and landowners. So we are working on another project up in the Penguin Vale, uh, Northeast Wales area statement project with Natural Resource Wales. And that project sort of sits as the next tier down from this project because that is really strategically engaging with the community in an even smaller area and looking at exactly what they want, where yeah. they want it and how we're going to fund it. Um, so this is sort of zoom back out a layer and this is about starting these conversations. Um, and there's there's various funding opportunities open at the moment. Um, you know, the, the, there's money from the wind farms, there's Cadwin Green Communities money, the sustainable development money, um, depending on what project it is and, and what enthusiasm there is for it. There's also potentially Welsh government money um, mm. and, and and the progression of this is is really, you know, it, it's down to how the conversation evolves with the community. Um, and this is by no means an attempt for the OMB to parachute in, come up with some ideas and then start doing stuff. Mm. This is much more about bringing a set of ideas to the community that may already be well understood or they may not be and having the conversation seeing what eagerness and enthusiasm there is for it and then identifying opportunities forward from there um, so in terms of what forms community consultation going to take um, really uh, brutally honestly i am still learning the lay of the land with the community in flangothlan as i said I'm, I'm not a local um but my experience working in the penguin vale over the last few months has uh has, has sort of given me the taste for and the learning for how to engage with the community um and my aspiration was for this meeting to be the first step of that community yeah. consultation because of um because of timings of when I got in touch with Gareth to ask for this meeting and I'd missed one of your meetings and so we've ended up with a bit of a time lag I have already done a little bit of community consultation with um, some of the individuals at friend, the Friends of the Earth meetings mm -hmm. and some of the um, interested parties in the Penguin Vale project um, and also those who have engaged with the Landscape Nature Recovery um, project we've been working on who are also in the Flangothlan area area so that process has started uh, in terms of what form it's going to take it'll take whatever form it needs to to have the conversation with the community and i'm really keen to do things face to face because i think that you get a lot more out of a face-to-face -face meeting um off the back of a, a similar meeting to this on the penguin vale i went down into the vale and spent a day there meeting meeting locals meeting landowners and my my uh, aspiration is that exactly the same would happen with this project um in terms of ongoing maintenance that is of course a consideration um, but as as with a couple of the other suggestions such as the main car park um, leaf management um, and, and the hedge maintenance um, this is one of those projects that's a little bit chicken or egg i could go to street scene and to highways and to the council departments and i could say to them how will we manage the maintenance of this this and this and then mm. i come to the community and the community go we're not interested in any of that mm. and then i go back to highways and go no sorry community aren't interested and then no. next time i go to highways then they're that much more dismissive because they're like well no we spent a load of time on the last project and it went to nothing so yeah. uh, they're, they're all completely valid questions and, and thoughts um none of them have been explored at this point because at the moment i've not got uh, a strength of um, emphasis from the community that there's a desire for them but um, the the main car park is a brilliant idea um, and I'll be honest I don't know how we managed to wander around fling off and go past that probably because we were on foot and not in a car. <laughs> Robin? Thanks um, just to add on, on the car park uh, question that um, that has been something that's been looking at I can say that Denbyshire already aware of and, uh, and and considering so this it came up when the 
um, when the, the prospect of trees along Castle Street uh, was being considered as part of Flagrock in 2020. Uh, and we were keen, the, the initial Arcadis uh, suggestions, I think had about eight trees on that, on the Castle Street um, section. Uh, but when then the uh, utilities and the wires and everything were looked at underground, um, it wasn't possible to get the initially envisaged number of trees um, along Castle Street, though I do think there's potential for more green infrastructure than, than is currently there. Um, uh, so we managed to get one extra tree, which um, obviously really pleased with. Um, and um, But there was a, a commitment then from Denbyshire that when they looked at the main car park that, um, that they would consider the uh, the bays that uh, well suds for a, a, as a starting point and then and then tree planting mm. uh, that the point you made about the rec fields and the the exposure and uh and a hot sun uh, will be will be very much the case for for the car parks so it would be really great to mm. see that um those discussions are ongoing so um i can probably provide an update over over coming months um and um and link in, link in any ideas that that you've got as well yeah Councillor Palmer. Point, point of order, Chair, before we go any further. Uh, point of order. Sorry, sorry again, very, Councillor very sorry. Davis, sorry. Um, can, can, point, point of order, uh, there's two members of the public contacting me who've been trying to get into the meeting and they can't get in. I don't know whether you can check that out, uh, Mr. Mr. Clark. Yeah. I mean, we have got two members coming on the link. The link is out there. Um, uh, if you can work on that, Gareth, and we'll carry on with the discussion. Yeah, Councillor Palmer? Can yes, it, 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 call me, please. I'm the council member. No, it's all good. It, it was just a, 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 a point of um, uh, that you should be aware of that planters are a moot point uh, yeah. for future reflection. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Can I, can I just to finish really, um, uh, it, uh, so it, it sounds really, really exciting and the, for me, the, the key concept that, that kind of underlines it, that um, uh, we ought to be shouting from the rooftops, uh, particularly given where we live, is the idea of natural infrastructure rather than built infrastructure, yeah? Because the first port of call for anything is to build, isn't it? um so the notion of doing it with nature rather than with cement yeah uh is a is an awesome concept as far as i'm concerned so thank you very much tom it's brilliant thank you thank you okay guys um uh statements from county councillors uh, uh well run into both here i mean um county councillor timms that's what we're meeting not that he has to probably apologise. Councillor Mile has apologised. He's yeah. unavailable this evening. So if we scroll into that, and also Councillor Brindley has apologised. He's just been to the dentist. So yeah. Hoping to get back. And uh, our youth rep, Shay, has uh, apologised as well, Chairman. Okay, thank you. So we're taking care of apologies. Uh, declarations of interest. Um, um, I've not got no pecuniary interest in it. Um, but um, there is uh, on our planning uh, um, uh, a planning application for the demolition of some garages on Penguin and the building of stuff, I think. I'm, I am right on, I did catch that. Uh, I'm chair of Penguin Community Association currently, so yeah, I, I have an interest, but it's, it's, uh, I'm not going to gain anything from it. Um, any other declarations of interest? No. Minutes to authorise the chair to sign the minutes of the previous meeting of the town council. Uh, any, uh, Councillor Haddy? Yeah, I'd like to propose that. Seconded by Councillor Loob. Anybody against? Thank you. Uh, committee minutes to approve the minutes of the Chitterslow Committee held on the 23rd of November 2021. Councillor Love. Can I just Council? come in there, Chair, please? Yeah. Can I just come can. in there, Chair, please? Yeah. Can I just can I just come in? Thank you. Um, I've just um, I, I did check to see how many people are coming or attending these meetings, and I think there were two at the last. I uh, I'd just like to be, put forward the point I made at the council um, 
we're spending three thousand pounds a year on this committee and we're getting two members of the public attending i'm not very happy about that uh, just just i'd like to uh, put that on the record thank okay. you right uh, uh councillor lovelock has proposed uh that uh minutes anybody like to second that thank you councillor lube any objections uh, yeah i vote against thank you pardon i vote against you vote against the minutes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay thank you uh, uh financial reports authorized payments yes chairman i'll just share the screen um just for Tom, actually, you don't have to stay, Tom, unless you have great interest, but you're quite happy you can stay if you want to. Um, I didn't want to just rudely disappear, but uh, I will I will drop out. Gareth's got my email. If anyone would like to get in touch, I'd welcome those conversations. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you. I need to open what I'm trying to show you first. Can I, um, can I just query the last um, objection? Is it possible to yeah. understand from Councillor Davies the, the basis of the objection to understand um, his concerns? Councillor Davies? Uh, uh, yeah, I've already made, uh, made my uh, comments. Thank you. Okay. Can you uh, sorry, not everybody, your, the, sound, the sound isn't very good, Stuart. Can you repeat? Uh, what your objection was, please. I've already um, made my feelings uh, known. Thank you. Oh, OK, thank you. Gareth. Yes, Chairman, I want to share this because there's one um, issue, not issue, but uh, I'm spelling, I'll say spelling mistake as well. Uh, scribe accounts, um, the subscription has come in again. Last year, we, we uh, funded this out of uh, underspend. Um, and again, I'm suggesting that we could, if, if members are happy, uh, we will find this from underspends in other, in other um, um, areas because it's cheaper than paying monthly. So if we get this paid for quickly, we make we make savings on an annual subscription. So I just wanted to point that out. That's the reason it's in, um, rather than pay it monthly, which is about 10, 20 percent more. So that's that's about that's all, Chairman. I just wanted to highlight that one one. Uh, one payment there, Chairman. Otherwise, if members are happy, um, you could approve that. Councillor, Councillor Lovelock, you got your hand up. No? OK, thank you. Uh, anybody got any questions? Councillor Palmer. Palmer. John? Is that, yes, I'm just, I'm just unmuting. Um, is that the um, Scribe account, Gareth? Yeah, that's the new financial management okay. software. Which okay. We've every okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, so Any other comments? Good. Anybody like to propose we accept those? Come on, somebody put their hand up, please. Councillor uh, Lou, seconded by Councillor Lovelock. Thank you very much. Um, bank reconciliation, there's two elements here. Um, I think this uh, the report is self-explanatory. Let's be able to get any clarification, which we're happy to give. Uh, councillor, a former councillor, uh, Richards, used to be the signatory, and in the good old days, used to pop in, look at the bank statements, and uh, look at the reconciliation and marry them up. Uh, we a couple of elements. We're online for lots of things, but we still get paper copies of all the accounts we operate. You know, mayor's account, mayor's charity account. The current account, the business money manager account, three or four sheets in each one, uh, you know, little booklets uh, and all the notification of FSA four times every year. It seems to be a complete waste of, um, of paper coming into the office, postage from the HSBC, and the fact that, you know, we've declared a claim the emergency. It'd be nice to think that we can significantly reduce the amount of paper. And, and, and not only that, I hate to say it, the, postman's vehicle time and journeys to bring all these things to the office. So we have each time I go online now, there's a prompt. Do you want to go paperless? So I think it would be nice, really. Um, I checked with the auditor as long as we can keep a copy, which we can. We can keep a PDF version, which is how I've had to send everything over the last two years to audit anyway. So the first first recommendation or suggestion to be recommended is that we move to paperless 
with HSBC. Uh, it won't be for that long because, as you know, we've been asked a task and there are climate action emergency action plans to look at a greener, a more ethical bank. So that'll be coming up with a new um, proposal be coming into the new council's consideration because it we can then get all the signatures done at the same time rather than doing something a couple of months later and to change everything again. And uh, again, that would be an online facility. So that the first is, is that, and then to match that, to comply with the regulations that the auditor has said, a mechanism to do that uh, reconciliation. So the idea would be being would be that this document here, which I want to share. Sorry, I can't share it. No. Hi, right, so we we need to <coughs> uh, nominate a member to verify bank right. conciliations. Yeah, so uh, they would. Um, Councillor Hardy. Uh, before we get to that point, um, would it be prudent for us to um, have a re regular running ex officio appointment, such as uh, a deputy chairman or something, so that the next time somebody departs, then we don't have a problem with having to replace them and fully breach of our financial <coughs> as long as they're not, uh, not signatories uh, to the account no they, i mean we, we don't need to, we don't have to do monthly it's easier to do monthly uh we we only have to do quarterly so we will catch up as it were so you know this document where it was suggested you know at the top it's got potential for signature uh, we could look at that electronically but well the idea is go go paperless so that would be sent which is this month so you see the bank balances at the bottom this will be then sent along with a PDF copy of the um, bank statements, so you can see the you know the end of month that we're cons considering. And then what suggestion is whoever's appointed would then um, send an email in the first instance to myself, so I can present it to the council. We can then present it, and that member can confirm that it's been accepted again. So we get a resolution as well from that member. It can be, it could be, it's, the, the only proviso, as Councillor Paddy said, is it mustn't be another check in signature. Yeah. So it's, uh, um, uh, picking up on Councillor Hadi's uh, comment, m might it be prudent, particularly as this council is uh, is heading towards uh, its end, and I mean, new council shortly, um, to uh, recommend that it's, it's perhaps the deputy mayor, and then that would carry forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the problem. I said because it'll all be online. There's no need for anybody to come to the office yeah. or something, and and then and then we make it. Uh, perhaps we could build that into um, uh, nominations. You know, for next yeah uh, the next annual meeting that we need. This per, the deputy mayor is a okay. Uh, yeah, but standing, standing. So standing that business. that was Councillor Hadi. Uh, sorry, Councillor Palmer, you've got a question. Yeah, uh, Gareth, you were talking about going paperless. Uh, and I have a uh, an online um, access to my accounts. And I have a little uh, machine that I access it. Access my account. Uh, would that be the same um, with this account? That, that, that if we go paperless on this, where would the and if it is, where would the little um, access machine? Be, be stored so that uh, and would the signatories be able to access it through this? No, I mean, it's actually here. Yeah. Um, right. And also you can do a code on on the app. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to prejudge things, but it's looking more and more likely that the only ethical bank who are taking customers that would fit up the purpose is one used by a lot of a lot of other councils, which is the Unity Bank, which uh, based in Birmingham. Um, uh, ethical works with social enterprises. As I say, a lot of councils run with it. The beauty of the the Unity Bank as well is it has like a triple lock facility. I could have I can put all the councillors' names. Could, I can't see why I'm saying this. All the councillors' names in. At the moment, it, I'm the only one that can operate this. Can't have a double up because obviously it calls for. So the authorization, the authorization you've just done now, you know, historically we have two names on it and myself. That gives the authority to make the payment. But you don't know if I'm clever enough to make a payment and do it right. 
So you're taking, you know, my, my word that it's been done. Obviously, you know, it does because the reconciliation shows it's been done on the cash book. But this system with Unity, when I put a payment up, it would automatically email all councillors. And then when two others verify that payment, it gets paid. Mm -hmm. There's an added level of security. So you could say, right, this is what was approved on the authorised list. You've now had an email. Once two councillors have looked at it, and say, yep, yeah, that complies. Click, that payment gets made. So there's an extra layer under that. So, all, I mean, this is just purely not having statements coming through the post. And I would copy them as PDFs and keep them manually in a, you know, on a file on a computer. But that, that's, as I'm saying, there, is, there are other things you need to do to tighten things up. And then, you know, that move to that bank would do that. And then this is just purely cutting down on paper. I think you're somewhat getting ahead of ourselves here because uh, we're not uh, discussing. No, 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 I'm discussing that. But I just wanted what to clarify. doing is uh, uh, talking about complying with our financial regulations. Yeah. So we've got, we've got, first of all, we've got a recommendation that uh, at, at this point in time, um, uh, the, the deputy mayor would uh, verify bank reconciliations. Yeah, that's fine. And then and that would move into the new council and be incorporated. Uh, at the next meeting. Uh, uh, so that was Councillor Haddie's uh, uh, proposal. Anybody like to second it, please? Councillor Lube, thank you very much. And then we have a, 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 a second part to uh, the recommendation, which is to move to paperless online banking. Uh, anybody like to propose that, please? Councillor Haddie, anybody like to second it? Councillor Palmer, thank you very much. And then, sorry, Chair, the third one is to agree that process of uh, how the information is imparted. All right, to, uh, to verify uh, the process as defined in paragraph 3.3. Yeah. Yeah, anybody like to propose we accept that? Councillor Lube, somebody second it, please. Come on, so we put a hand up. Uh, Councillor Haddy, thank you. Anybody got any objections to any of those? OK, thank you. Uh, we know. Um, so financial statements, town clerks report. Uh, uh, yeah, no, financial sorry, statements. financial statements. Sorry, Gareth. Again, again, I'll just search. I'll just sorry. I thought all these were open, but um, I, I presented a slightly different one this this month chairman as we're getting closer to the financial year end of the financial year rather um which i will now share just to explain uh, so as you can see this is one issue i might need to speak to clients right Clive to further down but generally things are already um to plan as it were shall we say or to budget um we've not nosedived um in terms of uh of expenditure and we have improved largely because as, as I said I've been warning about as you can see the income position so the income is significantly lower primarily because of very little in the town hall and it's better because if you recall for some of the tenants we've been recovering rent from last year which is coming to this financial year so if we hadn't done that the position would have been a lot worse um, asset management, obviously, that 26,800 is solely allocated for the roof. As are other bits, other bits as we identified elsewhere. Um, and there will also be a call on reserve. So, would, would, as I say, I don't foresee any major issues. Um, there are issues, say, staff costs, obviously, there. Things like training hasn't happened. Training's gone virtual, so there's been no subsistence to pay for anything there on training. Uh, it was factored in for the pay rise, which hasn't been approved. National pay rise, uh, which I understand might be 1.75%, not the 10% the union does for, surprisingly. Um, so, so the, the position with a couple of months to go is, is, is OK, and we're not going to get into any uh, significant problems. There will be, so to say, some movement around to pay for the scaffolding, etc., and uh, the um, roof works. So um, that, that's the position, Chairman. So I just thought we'd do it to show where we are. 
the, the, the query I have is this 12,000 I've gone through and through the accounts and I can't see why there's a budget of payments of 12,000 on income because we wouldn't be doing that. So that's something there's a new system for me. So that's something I'll have to check with the, the team and scribe. Uh, so it is irrelevant, it balances out like anyway. So that's the position, Chairman. OK, thank you. Anybody got any questions? Councillor Palmer? Uh, have you noticed a significant increase in the cost of um, energy, in energy costs? Uh, well, fortunately, we, just before everything, we got tied into a 24-month contract, if you remember, with good energy. So um, we, we want, obviously, we got another two years at that fixed price unless something drastically goes. And um, to be honest, I, I think the gas is a lot is less. We've got a new, more efficient boiler. Um, so I'm hoping that we can make some savings on that as we go ahead. It's early days before we were lucky because we got, got in in July and then, you know, on a 24 month contract. So, um, but obviously in two years time, who knows what it will be. So we may have a significant that long. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, just just because it, it doesn't appear anywhere else and the closest we get is uh, within a financial statement. Is the um, roof and the and the scaffolding stuff still on uh, to be down by the end of February? It was to come down the end of this week, but of course the weather now. They're, yeah. to, they're, they're dropping it down systematically. The last bit to do now is the, uh, uh, the cast iron um, troughing, and like all that other weather's gone. Yeah. Roof gutters. And of course the weather has prevented Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So yeah. it should have been down by the end of the week. Um, of course, we've got two storms on the way, so I don't know. But well, it'll be when we get so it'll be down when we get uh, a few unwindy day, unrainy days. Yeah, it's rain. It's rain at the moment to get people up there. To, they can't paint the thing in the rain. It'll just you know yeah. to be. I don't want to paint the yeah, yeah. when yeah. it's raining. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Anybody like to propose we accept the financial report, uh, financial statement? Uh, Councillor Haddy, anybody like to second that? Councillor Lovelock, thank you. Uh, Town clerk's reports. Uh, yes, sir, and, um, we got a couple of consultations. The first one is the Local Government Election Wales Act statutory guidance. Having read through it and attached it to the to the report, um, it just goes through a lot of the stuff that we've already been presented with. Um, this practitioners conference I'm on for the next few days. We've got two sessions on this as well on the guidance. I can't see anything in the document that is awkward or would cause any problems. And I think you know it's it's as a as a form of guidance is adequate. I'm sure things will change as we progress with new legislation as you always do. So the recommendation is that we just we just support the guidance and inform the Welsh government accordingly. That we have no objections and see it as a quite, quite an appropriate document. Anybody got any questions? Any comments? So the proposal is that we support yeah, the contents of the draft statutory guidance. Anybody like to propose that? Councillor Palmer, seconded by Councillor Haddy. Thank you. Anybody got any objections? No, thank you very much. The second item is the consultation we considered last last had a very good debate on last meeting. Um, and what I've done, I had comments. Thanks. thanks, thanks. Thank you very much from Councillor Palmer and, and, and Councillor Lovelock. And I've hopefully disseminated or uh, yeah. simulated it into the document. Uh, I've added one or two areas which weren't in there. One about the um, the um, oh, I forgot what it is another days, 20, 120 days. And then, as I said, there was that catch all at the end, uh, which um, was do you have any other comments? So a lot of the information from Councillor Lovelock I put in there. It's just whether those members are happy that it, it reflects in general what's been said. Um, uh, I've added affordability elsewhere as well under sections. And if you are, that we then present this as our formal comments on this. Topic. Yeah, this, this, this was, the, uh, the, the, there was a fairly substantial debate about this at our last meeting, wasn't there? Um, Councillor, had you had your hand up? Yes, I thought the uh, comments on, uh, on section 15 there um, we're a little bit on the speculative side. I, I would say that rather than vague. Yeah. Since it um, may offer is always a bit of a tricky one. Um, and it, 
to, it, it's not at all clear how uh, limiting um, second homes or short term energy lets <coughs> would um, uh, uh, improve the availability of uh, affordable housing to Welsh speakers. Uh, and if it did, uh, it would be inappropriate since we've got two official languages. So to restrict uh, anything to one language would be inappropriate. So I, 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 take, the, I take the sentiment, but I, I think the uh, net effect is a bit wishy-washy. Well, I'm not, not going to object to it. Yeah, my, my interpretation on that, John, was that uh, kind of almost that um, limiting the number of properties from use of second homes, short-term holiday lets, uh, had the potential for making more mm -hmm. housing available for everybody, yeah? Yeah. And in the context of everybody, it would also yeah, be making more housing available for Indigenous Welsh speakers. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I say, Chairman, I raise this with, I call him my son-in-law, but he's not. Uh, he's a senior policy officer now in the Welsh Government. And I said, it's very hard to understand how planning regs can affect the Welsh languages. They are standard in most countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I accepted that. So I, yeah. I did say, well, could you take the message back that, you know, they may be standard, but they would be best if they were adapted to the yeah. the, the guidance or the consultation that's at, in hand. So he's going to take that on board. He accepted it's very difficult, but it is something that has to go in on all consultations. But uh, anybody you're right, else? You're right. It was yeah, yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Councillor. Yeah, Councillor Davis. Yeah. Yes, th thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm agreeing with uh, uh, Councillor Harry in some respects. Um, I know when I was in post, there was talk about uh, Welsh stuff and all the rest, but, but he's quite right. We, we are a dual national, uh, dual language uh, country, so that, that we couldn't go down that route. Um, I'm just interested, the, the, and again, uh, Councillor Harry made the point, some rather sweeping statements. I'll, I'll, I'll toughen it up a little bit in, in the report of Councillor Palmer uh, and Councillor Lovelock. And um, just ask a simple question: Do they know how many um, uh, how many second homes there are in Llangollen, discounting caravans and chalets? Councillor Keddy, are you still there? No, he's gone. Uh, Councillor Keddy, at our last meeting, the you remember the figure that he came up with, um, but it was it was no. Councillor Keddy didn't do the report. Uh, Councillor Lovelock and Councillor. Palmer did it, so I'm asking them directly how many uh, second homes are there in Flangoth and discounting caravans and uh, chalets? Thank you. They yeah. don't know? Do they know? Do they know? Because it's in well, the report. Yeah, what I was trying to say, what I was trying Sorry, to say, Councillor Davis, was at the meeting where we discussed that, that when we discussed this at our last meeting, um, uh, I think, unfortunately, you weren't there, were you? But Councillor no. Councillor Keddy did have the figures that you're asking. Uh, yeah, but the point I'm making, Chair, is Councillor Keddy is not making that report. He's not mentioned in the report. Councillor Lovelock and Councillor Palmer uh, made the statements in their report, so I'm asking them directly. So it's not, nothing to do with Councillor Keddy. It's Councillor Lovelock and Councillor Palmer. Do they know how many um, second homes there are in St. Gotham? <laughs> Simple question. Yes or no? no? Can I, I, yes, they, they do know. Can they tell thank me? You. Thank you. Thank you, uh, councillors. Um, I, I, my responses to uh, the additions that um, that the clerk has has added in in this report were very much in response to uh, the the wider discussion that was quite extensive in the last meeting, where councillor Keddy did uh, provide some details. Um, and I do. I, this is an area, an area obviously that that does come up from time to time in the town. I think while I don't have the numbers that Councillor Keddy had that we referred to in that last discussion, if you do a quick search on uh, Airbnb, uh, which you know middle early well mid, middle of February, uh, so a winter period uh, for two people, there's 155 places to stay in Tlangothan, um within let's say a, a five four mile radius. Um, so, you know, the, there's quite a substantial number just for two people, let alone if you increase that to, uh, to include, um, you know, uh, accommodation for, for larger numbers. Um, so, you know, it does the, the point that I made uh, in the last meeting and that, um, that the town clerk has, has added to the initial report that we all uh, were, were broadly in favour of. 
um, was was around the knock on okay, impact. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, uh, thank you, uh, Just to, yeah, just to complete, just complete what I was saying, thank you, Councillor Davies. Councillor Davies, if you can let Councillor Lullon finish, that would be good. Thank you. You asked me to respond on my I thought, on the I point. Thought you'd finish. Sorry, sorry. And I hadn't finished actually. I was continuing to to answer the question. The point that I had made in the the previous discussion and that um, the clerk asked me to follow up with some additional detail was the knock on effect of. Um, of, of, of afford on affordable homes, of construction of affordable homes for local people, Welsh speaking or otherwise, um, that if the if there isn't a consideration of um, of secondary homes, then the demand for affordable homes con continues, and we continue constructing buildings, and that will inevitably have an impact on uh, on emissions and biodiversity, uh, which continues to increase. Okay, thank you, Councillor Palmer. Uh, I concur with Councillor Lovelock. Yeah, Chair, may I come back on that, please? Uh, uh, yeah, briefly, like Stuart, please, thank you. Uh, you can roll your eyes all you like, uh, Chair, but the point that I've made a point I've asked. I've not rolled in my eyes. A lot of words uh, come back. Davis. The point is, you did. I'm sorry if you look back on this film, you see yourself rolling your eyes. Anyway, the point I was, I was asking a, oh, a simple question, do they know? And it's quite obvious that they don't. So they've made a report to this council and they don't know the numbers. Thank you. That's all I want to do to make to clarify. Thank you. That's incorrect. All right. OK. Councillor, uh, uh, Councillor Palmer. That's 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 uh, an unnecessary statement. Yeah. And it yeah, really does. Yeah. Uh, Councillor really Lovelock. I'd like to ask Councillor Palmer to uh, Councillor Davies to withdraw that comment. I think that was rude and unnecessary. And I, as I've made very clear, I was responding specifically to some data that was shared in the last meeting. Uh, I added some additional. I was asked to add some additional information, which I have done, uh, and and that is the the situation. I think that was a very unnecessary comment. I'd like an apology, please. Okay, thank you. I, I can't. I, I, I want to kind of bring this to a close because we're 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 no longer debating the issue that that, that, that that's on the agenda. Um, we don't want to kind of move to bickering amongst ourselves. Uh, so uh, the proposal is that we. Uh, uh, oh, hang on, I've lost it now. I'll forward the revised comments as I. Yeah, ref. Um, uh, to recommend the revised observations once considered by members should be forwarded to Welsh Government as a Town Council's consultation response. Anybody like to propose that, please? Thank you, Councillor Haddy. Seconded. Aye. Councillor Palmer. Uh, anybody got any objections? No, thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Tidy Town Team. Yeah, it's that time of year when uh, Mr. David Davis provides us with a report. Again, you can see from the statistics, they provide a very valuable service, not only within the town, but around the town. And in a very difficult year, they still manage to get out and do quite a bit of work. Um, and again, if you quantify the value with, you know, of that with on cost, if you're a member of the staff of it. But bearing in mind, we were going to be charged £13 pound just to clean the front of the town hall by the uh, County at one time, you know, it's 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 uh, the amount of work they're doing, not just sweeping the side of town hall. It's considerable value for money, yeah. and I think it's something you know again that, that we should record uh, our thanks for them. Secondly, to that, as you know, they've got a, a sort of like a, a subsidiary contract with us to just tidy the century square up a few times in the year. Um, the new tenders have gone out for the um, it's in with the last with the presentation really. With about our floral displays and general ground maintenance. I have included that a monthly check on the square should happen then, but I still think there's the value in having a team to go in and do that sort of all in depth, tidy up before the major events and uh, we still have them at ever. And I think the job they do is exceptional. Uh, and therefore the recommendation is that we recognise the role of the Tidy Towns team yet again and the disturbing work they do. Reaffirm the agreement we got them, which is listed for those three cleaning sessions and in view of the fact that that's been going on for a good few years now um, it just increased with the inflationary amount to 325 from 300 next year to support their efforts during yeah uh, any comments councillor Haddy? Uh, i'd be pleased to support that proposition uh, th there was something that the cloud just
just uh, made a statement on tenders have gone out. Um, um, are these tenders for the uh, plantings? They're the tenders, yeah, they're the tenders. We should come back to asset management when they're in. For I was about to say, because we haven't seen anything yet. And uh, no, no, no. my next question was where have they been published? But they were posted on Facebook and they've, they've gone to the, the, the list of people that we have sort of regular suspects, as it were. Um, and local companies locally were contacted direct. Uh, about six or seven have gone out now. Uh, two have expressed an interest, so hopefully we will get some, I definitely think we will get something back from the existing contractor. Um, and um, um, one or two other companies we normally would have ever gone out of business. Like Plunhigge and Coldway aren't dealing with them anymore. Anyway, that, I'd say that will come to asset management for consideration. Is it is it is it a point of discussion as asset management this week? Isn't there? Is it going to be discussed? Yeah, it's, not, yeah, it's, not, it's not on the agenda though. It'll be the end of March. We need another one the end of March. This is a, an interim one because of uh, uh, having to spend. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lovelock. Thank you. Um, I also, um, you know, I think the, the work they do is is absolutely amazing and the, the diligence and uh, thoroughness. So absolutely to be commended and I, I support the proposal wholeheartedly. Um, I think the only um, suggestion I might make uh, would be a slight addition to the, I can't what it's called, the scope of work or the terms of, of reference would, would be perhaps to, to see if there's a reflection of the uh, climate and ecological emergency within the, the terms. Uh, I know we only have a small area that um, that the team look after, um, but the you know because we have a small area, maybe that there are opportunities for them to build in uh, some uh, some additional aspects into their work. Uh, just the one one example, I guess, to illustrate that um, you know they did excellent work uh, tidying up the centenary square, but under the tree, which was uh, getting very trampled and untidy uh, and and covered the area with with much neater looking rocks just whether there could have been an opportunity there to do a bit of um of planting uh, uh of of indigenous plants something like that um so just a small point but possibly one that could be nicely incorporated into their scope yeah okay thank you yeah that's, that's, that's a good point about uh, perhaps not chopping down pampas trees when the butterflies around and things like that and um, just on the stones it, it was a it is very much an emergency to make it look more preventable during lockdown um there is membrane in the lease there is earth there but um there are other proposals i'd like to take forward to asset management on that um, in the future as well so mm. it was just a slow cost quick it was rather, becoming rather unsightly for lots of reasons as you probably know that's reassuring to hear. Thank you very much. Uh, OK, thank you. So can I can I um, uh, Chair, I've had my hand up. Please. Sorry, Chair, Councillor Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just just again, reiterating what others have said, uh, sterling work, very much appreciated. Uh, but um, whilst we've made the lovely comments about them, um, the report itself doesn't make very nice reading. They are quite scathing. It, you know, the report is quite scathing about Denbyshire County Council and some of its offices. Um, I was going to ask Councillor Timms if he'd have come to the meeting tonight, uh, why he allowed this to happen. And uh, also, I would like us as a council to write to the county and say, what on earth is going on? There are these people that are given, was it 10 to 15,000 pounds that Gareth has uh, uh, worked out that, that it would have cost to have it done uh, and something what was the word used um, 10 to 15,000 for for what Stuart uh, I missed that the work the, the, uh, if you look at the report Garth I think it said that the work they do is equivalent to 10 to 15,000 pounds worth of work that they're giving for free um, so I, I'm quite concerned that Denbyshire County Council the street scene has uh, done what they've done um, uh, and uh, I think we as a council should be writing to DCC and say, hang on a, a bit, these people are doing sterling work. Um, we want you to uh, re put into place again that insurance, is it? Uh, 100 pounds worth or something like that. Um, stuff like that. Anyway, um, I, yeah. see, uh, I think, I think, I think my suggestion might be, Stuart, that what we, yeah. uh, what we do uh, is perhaps forward their report to Denbyshire for Denbyshire to communicate with them. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to stiffen it up a little bit to say that this council is disappointed with the action of, of DCC in uh, taking away their funding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, yeah, Councillor Haddy. 
I don't think the uh, comments made by Councillor Davies are quite correct. It's my understanding that the uh, insurance cover was withdrawn because they failed on several occasions to meet the requirements uh, co contained within the insurance cover. So it's not quite as straightforward as it might appear, as reported in various other uh, Facebook uh, pressure. I can only go by the report that's in front of us, Councillor. So I think um, it's a matter for them to deal with directly rather than us as a council. Uh, are you putting that forward as a, a uh, proposal, Councillor Davis? I'll put it forward as a, as, a, as a formal proposal that we write to the uh, Devonshire County Council expressing our concerns that uh, funding has been withdrawn and for them to reinstate it. Thank you. Anybody like to second that? Uh, Councillor Lovelock. All those in favour? Yes. One, two. Councillor Davis, one, two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, uh, three people have voted for. Those against? Four. One. So uh, uh, Councillor Davis, uh, uh, Councillor Davis's proposal is carried. So if you can, uh, uh, Gareth, uh, write to uh, Danbyshire County Council querying the withdrawal of yeah their funding, please. Thank you. Uh, right, so we have um, uh, a series of three proposals and recommendations. Can I add a fourth one? I suppose it might need to uh, go to an uh, independent vote uh, that um, Gareth writes on behalf of the council to the Tidy Town team, thanking them for their efforts during the course of the last 12 months. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think that was implicit in the first recommendation. Yeah. So the recommend uh, the recommendations there in front of you. Anybody like to propose that we accept them? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Palmer. Councillor Davis second in that. All those. Uh, or is there anybody against? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So David's first. day uh, window competition. Yes, Chairman, we did do this. Um, I can't remember who was the mayor. Was it was it Sheena? So um, a few years back, yes, um, we, we were approached then uh, to do a St David's Day competition, which went went down quite well. Um, and then I see the ambitions come back again this year. And in the report, as you can see, they they do a lot of work to support the uh, use of Welsh language in the retail sector, hospitality, and so and across the county. And they do get funding, obviously, from the county and Welsh government to achieve that. But when it comes down to sort of site specific or town specific initiatives, uh, they, they are um, looking for further funding. And as you can see in the report, um, uh, they're looking in, in essence for £300, uh, sorry, £160 to £300, like £25, there, towards the cost as listed. So it's to, to put some cash prizes in, certificates, a little bit of marketing and some printing, obviously, of, of the certificates and everything. Um, as I said, we, we, we have done it in the past. It was well received. Uh, the mayor would judge it the week before and uh, his consort would go around. There'd be no administration on our side. It would be solely run by mentally I see it in this. Um, we possibly have £160 somewhere. So we could identify it from the, you know, the community grant scheme, which uh, hasn't been taken up. And as we sort of resolve not to push it again because of the issues with expenditure. Also, the income on the town hall, so it, it wouldn't make a big dent into that. So, if members did want to support this initiative, then I would suggest we would take it from that budget, Chairman. But it's up to the members' decision if they were to support it. Right. So, the recommendation is that the town council consider supporting the St David's Day window competition. Uh, unless anybody's yes. got, uh, got any questions, thank you, yes. Councillor Davis. Anyone would like to second that? Councillor Lube, anybody oppose it? Thank you. Uh, planning applications. We've lost Councillor Keddy, so yeah, uh, and he's not sent us any notes this this month, has he? Yes, yeah. he did. He has. Yeah. I never received them, so yeah. Which is probably why you've. What well, again? Apologies. I, it's here, one hundred and two, on my um, 
on my Word version of my report. Yeah. It doesn't appear on PDFs, so I apologise. So Penguin isn't one to be considered. I'll have to get hold of uh, John in ACS to find out there must be something wrong somewhere. Um, so I apologise for that. Um, um, the, I mean, should I read out his comments? Should I to call them up? Or? Yes, please. Uh, uh, starting with zero, zero one nine. Share the email, shall I? Or? Okay. Uh, See if I can uh, lost you all now. I don't know where you've gone. I'll see why not. Right, here we go. So there's these are notes, as you can see. Um, Darwin Villas, Cadu, no objection, Highway, no objection, Dual Cymru, Standing Letter, but no objection, A and B, no objection. This house is on the south corner of Hill Street, Aberada. As this is in line with everything we agreed on in the planning correspondence of the last meeting, I propose we do not object. Anybody got any anything to comment? You need to shout out because we can't see everybody's face anymore. Uh, uh, right, the proposal is that we accept the application. Should we, run, should, we, should, we run, should we run to the vault chairman and then at the end we can check out so you can see them. Ponsonby uh, works on Chester tree. Trees I recently lost a large limb. It's now dangerous to use the car. Yeah. Uh, to make it safe. So I think that's. And secondly, the sycamore is dead. And those of future safety risk. Um, ignore penguin. As I said, that's come through as a. As a no, that, uh, Gareth. Gareth, I've, yes. I've looked at it. I think I've perhaps got a little overexcited. Yeah, I believe yeah. that the planning application has gone in, but it's not this one. So no, okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I think I know you want me talking about. Uh, and then the reconsultation land a part of Ron Havrid, the Pridge Road West. Um, again, had no objection. The neighbour um, has objected. But essentially, Councillor Kevy is saying it's a proposal that is very similar with a different layer to roof arrangement. And he doesn't see any reason to reverse that decision. So in, in essence, Chairman, unless other other members have comments on them, uh, there would be no objection to all those applications. Uh, there's, a, there's another one on the next uh, erection of a uh, well, 0801. Is that over the page? So yeah. Can you go far enough? No. Oh, 0801, yeah. That's yeah. the reconsultation. That was the reconsultation. Yeah. yeah okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Uh, anybody got any, any, any comments on any of those? The recommendation for all of them is that we accept them. Uh, anybody like to propose that? Councillor Hadde, seconded. Councillor Lube, any objections? No, thank you very much. Uh, uh, certificates of decision. Well, just to be noted, Chairman, just for the. Yeah. Planning uh, correspondence. Uh, we've considered those items really in the main agenda under the consultations. So, uh, sorry, okay. the, the report. Uh, no correspondence. No correspondence. Everything I've had, I forwarded on with significant numbers. Report to the town council. This is outside bodies you represent. Uh, uh, Harvey, have you got anything you'd like to say? Um, no, I had to. I had to say my apologies to the uh, jubilee meeting, and then yeah. with with school council, we had a meeting with Graham Timms and the rest of Denbyshire County Council about banning single use plastics in school, and. There was a report coming from the canteen company that was they had a trial in Osco Glencloy that apparently wasn't very successful, but we're still waiting to have a response on that. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, just to um, uh, reiterate, because not everybody was here, we did have uh, a meeting on Friday um, organised by uh, Sheena to discuss uh, what we might do 
uh, for the uh, the Queen's 70th Jubilee. Uh, we've got uh, some skeletal plans. I had a I had um, something off Flam Blogger today asking for details, uh, and I'm going to respond and say it's very skeletal at the minute. And as soon as we have details, we'll let him know. Uh, we've got some ideas. Uh, we're uh, doing a little bit of research, and I'm going to meet again uh, in a, a week or so's time just to kind of feed back to each other and decide on a, a final plan of action and what we're going to do. So uh, uh, that's kind of where we are with that at the minute. Is anybody else? Uh, Councillor Palmer? It's about the footpaths um, yeah. working group, whatever it's called. Um, we, we had a further meeting. Uh, a, a lot of what's ha uh, there's been problems, obviously, with trees coming down on footpaths but that's out with our uh, remit. Um, and uh, we, we are relying on the AOMB and Denbyshire um, to the recommendations that we made that they will uh, fulfil their responsibilities. Okay, thank you. 